Welcome to lipids part five. Um, here we'll look a little more closely at eicosanoids. Let's get started. Um, there are three main classes of our eicosanoids. We're going to focus on two of them, the prostaglandins and the leukotrienes. And um, why these are so important is because they are the chemical initiators of inflammation. And if you've um, paid attention recently, you've noticed that more and more illnesses are related to um, excessive inflammation and that sort of thing. So it's become, we become aware of the role of inflammation and its consequences to our health. So um, eicosanoids are grouped together because they're all derived from 20 carbon unsaturated fatty acids. So when you see the word unsaturated, what should come to mind is that we're going to have carbon-carbon double bonds. And because we're talking about biological molecules, remember that it's al they're always going to be in the cis um, stereoisomer form. All righty. Now, um, the prostaglandins and the leukotrienes are synthesized from arachidonic acid. So where do we get the arachidonic acid? Well, I think this is really fascinating. Our bodies are so efficient that the arachidonic acid is synthesized from the hydrolysis of the glycerophospholipids in our cell membranes. So that way, we have this um, chemical resource available in every single cell because we recognize that the phospholipids, right, are part of our, part of our cell membranes. So we have this um, immune response right there ready when we need it. The tricky part is, is that it's been um, triggered too much lately. Alrighty, so here is a typical um, phospholipid, and right, we see the glycerin, just kind of a quick review, right, so there's glycerin, so there's our glycerin backbone, and we see, right, there's the phospholipid part, and so now we look here and we see the unsaturated chain, so we can recognize that. If we count the carbons, we'll find that there are 20. So now we're going to do a simple hydrolysis reaction. So we know to cut this bond right here, and we'll have the water come in. And here we have our hydrolysis um, enzyme. And so this, now the molecule's been flipped around, but here's the carbonyl carbon. And this would be the hydroxyl group that came from the water. And so here is our arachidonic acid, which with those cis double bonds gets that curved shape. So sometimes we can see arachidonic acid written in a linear form, um, but the, um, the where it's not explicitly showing the cis double bonds, but we see it's really important to recognize that structure of the cis double bonds because it helps us recognize how it can be used as a precursor, especially for the prostaglandins. We can look over here at the, at the region um, carbons 8 through um, 12, and see that because of the cis double bonds, it sets us up for this ring formation. Um, and then here we have more going on at carbon 6 to create this part for the leukotrienes. Now, um, so now I just want to connect this with what we're learning about um, our molecular portfolios about drugs. So the prostaglandins, um, Right, so the prostaglandin will actually trigger inflammation. So if we're trying to avoid inflammation, we can use drugs called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So we just talked about cholesterol in the previous video. We can, so we can see this is, these are definitely not steroids. There's no fused rings. So let's make sure everybody um, has this um, acronym down, right? So non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And so these are examples of like aspirin is an example. And um, the way they work is that we see here that there is um, several, sev several enzyme catalyzed steps that must occur. Well, one of those enzymes is cyclo um, oxygenase. 
And so what happens is these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they inhibit this enzyme and prevent the formation of the prostaglandins. And so back in, a, in our protein and enzyme chapter, we looked at inhibition. So here's an example where we have the inhibition of an enzyme to prevent the compound that triggers inflammation. For the leukotriene pathway, um, the enzyme, one of the major enzymes here is 5-lipoxygenase, um, right? And using the suffixes to recognize that they're enzymes. And so then there's another class of drugs that, um, that are called lipoxy, right? Makes sense. Lipoxygenase, right? Inhibitors. So you see that both, both forms of, of drugs to prevent inflammation work by inhibiting the enzymes that would produce the biological molecule that triggers inflammation. So um, there's not, you know, that pretty much wraps it up. That's all you're responsible for with eicosanoid. So you want to know about the, where the arachidonic acid come from, the hydrolysis of the phospholipid and then the role of the anti-inflammatory drugs to inhibit the enzymes. So take time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.